Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. Now, by popular demand, I went ahead and I asked Daytona Sensors for an adapter harness that goes from the MSD 6010, 6012 into the Smart Spark LS ignition box because I know some of you actually have either a 6010, 6012, or actually the newer 14, and you guys either have a bad box or you want to switch over to the new um, SSLS. And Daytona Sensors actually does make an adapter harness to go from the MSD boxes to the newer SSLS, but the issue is that it does not actually bolt up to the 6014, although the harness will actually work because they do use the same Delphi connector. You do have to do a little bit of rewiring. I know a couple of people who've actually gone through this ordeal and they've actually completed it. I also know a couple of people who have tried it and gave up and ended up buying a new harness. The point of this is actually to prevent you from buying a new harness, save you a couple hundred bucks on that. Basically, it'll be a smooth transition and all you would need is this and the SSLS ignition box and you're actually good to go. What's cool about switching over to the SSLS from the 6014, it'll actually give you the ability to add an external map sensor so you can actually change the sensor to whatever sensor you want versus on the 6014 where you were kind of locked in to the sensor that was built in and if that sensor went bad, you have to replace the whole box. Uh, now that is no longer an issue and you're going to be able to go ahead and run the SSLS. The 6010 and the 6012 are now discontinued, so although you might be able to find it here and there, support for it is pretty much now non-existent. So now we're stuck trying to find a way to get that 6014 harness to work in case you do end up wanting to switch. It took me about two hours to actually pinpoint all the wires and make sure I got everything right and double check and triple checked everything to actually get it to work. Overall, the process itself is just a little bit tedious, but it's not difficult at all. Once you actually know where each pin is supposed to go, it actually goes by really fast. You could probably get it done within like half an hour, 45 minutes. The process is super simple. The MSD14 has two main connectors versus the SSLS adapter harness, which only has one. They're both Delphi connectors, so you're actually consolidating these two harnesses, and it's not as difficult as you may seem. I actually started the process backwards, working off the MSD harness, and it actually becomes a little bit more difficult. So if you work off of the uh, adapter harness, it becomes a lot easier because there are a lot of wires that you're going to be deleting, some sensor power, some sensor grounds, the ECT, and a couple other things that you will no longer need because it's built into the SSLS internally. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through what pins you're going to need to remove from one harness and move it into another pin so it matches the adapter harness. So we're actually going to be moving the pins inside the MSD6014 and we're going to be moving it to the place where it shows us that it has to be for the 6010. So to make things easier, I would download the instructions for the 6014, the 6010, and the SSLS so you can have a reference of where each wire is supposed to go in case you get lost. But I've pretty much got everything under control. If you just basically follow these instructions, you should be able to get it, but I would double check before you actually plug anything in. You guys do need to remember that if you do something like, like rewiring it and you actually messed up and you burn up the box, you are going to void the warranty on your SSLS. So if you're not comfortable doing this, just go ahead and buy the harness. If you are comfortable in your wiring skills and you think you can go ahead and redo it, go ahead and tackle it. But do keep in mind, if anything goes wrong, you will ruin your box and you probably won't be able to warranty something like that. On the adapter harness, you have a couple connectors here. You have the Delphi connector that's going to be used to communicate with the MSD harness. You have the black Deutsch connector, which is going to go into the SSLS. You have the gray Deutsch connector, which is also going to go into the SSLS. You have this black wire that is actually your two-step and step retard that you have to set up inside of the laptop, which Daytona Sensors calls GPI-1 and GPI-2. In the MSD, it actually says two-step and step retard, so you can wire those in later if you end up using them. And lastly, you have this gray Molex connector, and that's to connect the USB interface device so you can actually plug the whole thing into your laptop. But connecting to a laptop is not necessary to get this going, especially if you're just trying to get something basic to run. You could just find a sample timing table on the 1 through 10 dial and just go up as you want to get more and more aggressive and you should be good to go. I have a video on how to repin the Delphi connectors so you guys can get a general understanding of how to do it. But you do need to learn how to read and understand where the pins actually go. So the Delphi connectors actually have an A and an H on the female side and on the male side they have an S 
and a J. So that way when you plug them together, it'll line up to the pins that they're supposed to be at. So if we line these two up, I can probably do it with one hand, you're gonna have A through H on one side, and on the other side, you're gonna have S through J. So when you are lining up the connectors, so when you're doing the wiring and I say that pin F is supposed to go into pin G, Go ahead and just line up here so you know where H is, you know where A is, so go A, B, C, D, E, F. So you know that to pull pin F out, and then you're going to move it to pin G. So one thing you have to know is that there is no pin I, there is no pin O, and there is no pin Q. So it's going to skip, so it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, skips I, and then you flip it around and it'll say J. And so now, now you know where the pins are supposed to be. It's a little bit complicated, but once you have it in your hand, it's pretty straightforward and you'll be able to understand what it's supposed to be. So starting out, it's pretty basic. You're gonna go ahead and start with the MSD 6014 and you're gonna go ahead and pull pin J and move it to pin A. You're gonna take pin H, move it to pin B. You're going to take C10. So what that means is you're actually gonna take pin C from the 10 pin connector and you're going to move it to pin C in the 16 pin connector. You're gonna take pin C from the MSD harness and move it to pin D. Pin D, you're gonna move it to pin E. Pin E, you're gonna move it to pin F. Pin F, you're gonna move it to pin G. And then you have pin K10, which is pin K from the 10 pin connector on the MSD, and you're gonna move it to pin H. You have pin J and K from the MSD harness, and those are actually going to be blank. Those are for the optional external map sensor if you wanna add one later. But out of the box, it doesn't have any kind of provisions that will lead you to the sensor itself. Although the box does have the provision, the MSD harness does not. So you're gonna to have to add those in later. Pin L stays with L, M stays at M, N stays at N, N stays with N, P stays with P. So all four of those wires are actually coils number seven, five, three, and one, whereas pin C, D, E, and F had to be offset one pin, and that was for coil two, four, six, and eight. Pin D10 is pin D from connector 10, and that gets moved to pin R on the 16 pin connector. Pin E10 is pin E on the 10 pin connector, and that's gonna get moved to pin S in the 16 pin connector. And that actually pretty much just covers the whole thing. There's really not much else. You're so the mule we're actually testing this harness on is a Junkyard 5.3 that we picked up last week from the Junkyard. I stripped it down and I installed the carburetor stuff off my truck and I just threw it on here. And as you guys can see, I have the MSD harness uh, sitting right here, just wrapped around the top just to get it out of the way. The connections to the engine are actually all the same. So you have the same driver's side coil harness, passenger side, you have the same cam harness that gets hooked up right here, the crank harness that hooked up to the starter, and then you have the MSD uh, ground wires that you have one here, and you have the other one right here. You don't actually hook them up to the little coolant things, but I didn't have any bolts for the head, so I just put them there for now. When we actually set up the motor, we're actually gonna consolidate these grounds and put them somewhere else. So aside from the main power wire that we saw earlier in the video, so you actually had two pink wires that were left over, those actually also go to battery positive, and then you are left over with a black and two brown wires. Those are actually gonna get hooked up to battery negative. So these three wires are actually the coil and sensor grounds that those need to get hooked up back to the battery. And the two extra pink wires actually feed the coils themselves. So the red wire supplying power to the box will also supply power to the coils. You can either decide to have them separate or have them together, but the point is that the two extra pink wires you need to go ahead and give those power and the black and the two brown wires that were left over you got to go ahead and give those ground this is all really shoddy but i needed to set it up like this so in case i needed to move the wires around i had an idea of where they were supposed to be because i'm going to be using gen 3 style sensors gen 3 style coils i'm going to have this box set up to mode zero advanced table zero and then everything else is going to be left the same so you're just going to go ahead and hook up the adapter harness you don't have to modify the adapter harness at all and all you have to do is hook up the 16 pin delphi connector and the two deutsch connectors and you should be able to get it going eventually i'm going to go ahead and tidy this up but let's go ahead and see this thing run
So that pretty much covers everything. I'll have links to resources in the comments below. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.